Hello, this is Pastor Malin Smith, pastor here at New Hope Baptist Church here in Watertown, New York. And I welcome you to our ongoing video series, Journeying Through the Books of the Bible. Our vision here at New Hope Baptist Church is living life together by bringing new hope in Jesus to all people. I remember growing up as a boy, uh, there was a period of time where my father had decided that we were going to have Schwann's ice cream delivered to our home. And every Friday, the Schwann's ice cream truck would back into our driveway and my sister and I, we would run out excited, uh, ready to meet uh, the Schwann's ice cream man. And there was a nickname that we had given to him. We called him the ambassador of goodness. Uh, and the reason we called him the ambassador of goodness, and I'm, that might have also had been uh, one of the taglines from the commercials for Schwann's ice cream. But at any rate, the reason why we called him the ambassador of goodness is because Whatever he brought in that truck, it was going to be good. And I remember my dad would always obtain from him a big five-gallon bucket of fresh vanilla ice cream or whatever flavor he happened to have available. And you realize we would eat that whole thing in one week and we'd be ready for the next delivery. And so that Schwann's ice cream man, he was the ambassador of ice cream. He was the ambassador of goodness. But when we turn to Paul's letter uh, to the church at Corinth, called 2 Corinthians. We see here reference to the theme of being ambassadors of God's grace. 2 Corinthians 5, verses 20 to 21 says, Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making an appeal through us. We beg you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 20 to 21. Now, as the Apostle Paul was writing his letter to Corinth, this being called 2 Corinthians, what is the relationship that it has to 1 Corinthians, which we also find in our New Testaments? 1 Corinthians uh, was written in 55 A.D., you can read the background of the church at Corinth and Paul's founding of it in Acts chapter 18. Now we understand, and we're not going to get into all the details about this, uh, but we understand in particular passages such as 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 9 uh, that there had been at least one other letter that Paul had written to the church at Corinth that we don't find in our New Testaments. And in this letter he had evidently had addressed some very serious problems. And so here in 2 Corinthians, uh, reference is also made to that letter. Matter of fact, uh, Chuck Swindoll uh, proposes that there may have been as many as four letters that uh, the Apostle Paul wrote. Two that are unknown and no longer existent, and then, of course, the two that we find here in our New Testaments. So whether Paul ultimately wrote four letters, some have suggested maybe three letters, uh, Paul does make reference here in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, uh, as well as chapter 7, verse 8, uh, he makes reference to a letter that he had written prior to 2 Corinthians that he calls uh, the letter of sorrow. Now, whether that was 1 Corinthians or another letter uh, that we no longer have uh, existing, whatever the case may be, Paul was intimately concerned about Corinth. Out of all the churches that Paul ministered to, he had spent the most time at Corinth. If you read Acts 18, you discover Paul had spent up to a year and a half in Corinth, planning the church, establishing the church, making sure that it was on its way. But this church, uh, it was born out of a Greco-Roman pagan background. And of course, uh, trying to shed uh, those former behaviors, those former ways of life, uh, was a very difficult process. Now, as we saw in our last video, when we looked at 1 Corinthians, the theme there was that of the call to sanctification. If we come here to 2 Corinthians, and we find out that the theme is being ambassadors of God's grace. Because after all, we can't live the Christian life apart from God's grace. So the letter of 2 Corinthians is all about showing the Corinthians and Christians who read this letter what it means to be an ambassador for Christ. Now if we were just to offer a quick outline of this letter, it would be as follows. In the first two chapters we see how the God of grace calls us to live in his love. You can't be an ambassador, you cannot be a representative of God in Christ Jesus, lest you have his love flowing through you to 
towards others. Then in chapters 3 to 7, we see how God has called us to be ambassadors of what Paul refers to as the new covenant. Now the new covenant uh, has to do with the Holy Spirit's indwelling us. Uh, the new covenant is referenced in Old Testament passages like Jeremiah 31. And basically the new covenant describes the context in which the Christian is living out their life with God in this world. Then in chapters 10 to 12, we see Paul referencing God's call on himself. One of the things that you discover in 2 Corinthians is where Paul is defending his apostolic credentials because unfortunately there were false teachers that were creeping into Corinth and they were claiming themselves to have apostolic authority and then they were trying to cast doubt on Paul. And so Paul had to defend his apostolic credentials. And that's what he does in chapters 8 and 9 and then more so in chapters 10 to 12. And then the final chapter of 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 13, it finally urges us to examine the genuineness of our calling in this grace. Again, if we are going, if we are going to be a, uh, ambassadors of God's grace, uh, we better make sure that we have experienced it ourselves. Now, one of the things that I find very interesting about the book of 2 Corinthians are the references that we find to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I have them written down here. Now, we're not going to go through all of them in this video. I'm just going to point out a couple of them. But, for example, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, verse 20 to 22, For as many as are the promises of God, in Him they are yes. Therefore also through Him is our amen to the glory of God through us. Now, He who establishes us with you in Christ and anointed us is God, who also sealed us and gave us the Spirit in our hearts as a pledge. At 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 20, 21 and 22. It's interesting how the Apostle Paul makes references to all three persons of the Trinity. He makes reference to God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But we see here how Christ is described as a member of the Trinity, we also see reference to how Christ is the yes to all of God's promises. If you turn to the last verse of 2 Corinthians, note there, 2 Corinthians 13, verse 14, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. That's 2 Corinthians 13, 14. So there again, we see reference to Christ in terms of his deity, in terms of him being uh, the second member of the Godhead. And then let me just point out one more reference that we find uh, in 2 Corinthians concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. It's actually a verse that we've already uh, referenced. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. This verse, 2 Corinthians 5.21, describes how when Christ died on the cross, how our sin was credited to him. It was reduplicated in him. He chose to be treated just like us on the cross so that in saving faith, his righteousness could be reduplicated and credited to us. And therefore, what 2 Corinthians 5.21 shows us is the foundation of, for redemption and justification, which we talked about in the last video, namely where God makes a legal declaration of the, of the sinner being a saint and how we are credited with the righteousness of God. And that, of course, only takes place by grace through faith alone. So I would urge you, uh, just pause the video if you need to and mark down all these verses. And I would urge you to read them since they all refer to the Lord Jesus Christ. The book of 2 Corinthians is an incredible letter. Uh, if you were to read it from beginning to end, it would take you less than 30 minutes. But I will tell you this, when you finish reading this book, you will have a better grasp of what it means to be an ambassador for the grace of God. It really equips you to be able to know how to carry oneself, how to communicate the gospel as a follower of Christ in this world because after all, uh, people need to hear about the grace of God and there are no better persons 
to communicate the grace of God than those who have experienced it by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And so that, in a nutshell, is the book of 2 Corinthians. I commend it to you and thank you for taking the time to watch this video today.